Black people should have recognition for themselves and their backgrounds and their relationships with other people in the world and thus lose some of their alienation. This is a quote by Katherine Dunham, a dancer, choreographer, and anthropologist who hailed from Chicago. No matter where she danced, mesmerized crowds, or stood up against segregation and alienation of different black cultures, she represented Chicago. As a Chicagoan, she helped break the color barrier not just in American classical dance, but also in the acceptance of non-traditional dance forms, including African American and modern dance. Catherine Mary Dunham took a stand by dancing and responding to serious events through a new style of dance in America. This allowed her to become a figure known across the globe, fighting for the rights of black people by refusing to perform in segregated areas and shedding light on lynching that at the time was still prevalent in the American South. Not only was Dunham known for dancing and choreographing, but she used that art to have other people see for the unique patterns of dance by people of African descent. What started in Chicago eventually spread across the country internationally. Catherine Dunham was born in Glen Ellen, Illinois on June 22, 1909 to an African-American father and a French-Canadian mother. Glen Ellen is a suburb of Chicago located about 25 miles due west from downtown. During her early years, she began to have a passion for dance and writing. In high school, Dunham joined the Terpus Corian Club and began to learn a modern dance based on the ideas of her two teachers. While she was still in high school, Catherine opened a private dance school on her own for black children to dance. She and her brother Albert were particularly close. The family wanted both siblings to grow up to be teachers. Catherine even followed her brother to college, initially with the intent to become a teacher. In 1929, she applied and was accepted to University of Chicago in Chicago's Hyde Park neighborhood. Catherine joined her brother and attended, being one of the first African-American women to graduate with a bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degree in anthropology. After Catherine Dunham created her own dance technique and formed a company by the name of Ballet Nangre in 1930, the first African-American ballet company, over time, black dancers slowly began to perform in more areas across America and expanding across America. Life in the 1930s for blacks was difficult because there weren't as many opportunities for blacks if they wanted to attend white dance companies. There was still segregation in schools, blacks did not have the right to vote, and lynching was still common, especially in the American South. All of these things spilled into other American cultural things, including dance. Before this, there was discrimination in most areas that Dunham and her company performed in. She reached out to many people by performing in, eventually, non-segregated areas. Prior to the 1930s, white companies had few black dancers. There were very few opportunities for black dancers because of segregation and racism. Many black children were not able to learn about dance in the first place. And uh, in the end, I told them we would never come back until we could appear before people who were sitting next to each other. People of my color were sitting next to people of your color. There's a kind of racism that is simply pure ignorance. People just don't know. And they don't know and they don't think and they follow. <laughs> and I said at the end, you know, until we could sit next, next to you, I wouldn't come back. And they got themselves together and they sat next to each other and none of it rubbed off. In 1935, Catherine applied for a fellowship from the Julius Rosenwald Fund. Julius Rosenwald was a Chicago icon. As part owner of Sears and Roebuck and Company, he was an established business leader. But Rosenwald was also a great philanthropist. He was a founder and financial backer of Hyde Park's Museum of Science and Industry and established the Rosenwald Fund, which had a particular focus on education and upliftment of African Americans in Chicago and across the country. Catherine applied to the Julius Rosenwald Fund to study the cultural connections of many West Indies dances as an expression and connection to African heritage. She was awarded up to $2,000 per year to study different dance forms of the Caribbean, which is about $40,000 in today's economy. This award was important because it legitimized her ideas and concepts and equally as important, provided her with the funds to be able to study it. In 1938, Kathleen created a dance called Southland, which was in response to blacks being hung. 
Though I have not smelled the smell of burning flesh, and have never seen a black body swaying from a southern tree, I have felt these things in spirit, Dunham said. The morning after, Catherine Dunham was informed that Southland would not be performed or reviewed in the United States. This was one of the earliest indications of Catherine's ability to connect culture, dance, and the socio-political issues of the times. Catherine had very much become well known for dance and choreography, but she used dance to stand up against segregation. In 1944, a Louisville incident included the Catherine Dunham Company. When Dunham found out about blacks not being able to watch her show, she told the white audience that she would not return because people of her kind weren't allowed to sit next to white people. Dunham hoped for democracy to bring a change. Dunham maintained this commitment to taking a stand throughout her life. In her 80s, Catherine Dunham took a stand for Haiti against the United States' 1992 policy that prohibited Haitian immigrants from the same protections that other immigrants from other countries had. She protested with a 47-day hunger strike in 1992. More people took notice of Dunham because of her fame, including President George H. Bush and Muhammad Ali. Catherine Dunham is still important today because of her groundbreaking fusion of dance, culture, and socio-political engagement. She inspired some of today's biggest dance icons. Alvin Ailey, whose modern dance company is revered around the world, said that he first considered dance as a career after seeing her perform. Ailey called her technique the closest thing to a unified Afro-American dance existing. Her ability to connect dance costume and culture were seen across Europe and sold out crowds during the 1940s and 50s and long after in European imitations of her dance and fashion. The late actress and performer, Eartha Kitt, attributed her early professional years to having been personally chosen by Dunham to participate in her dance company. Dunham paved the way for dancers even today. A very recent phenomenon called hip lay combines traditional ballet point dance with urban hip hop skills, music, and fashion. What Catherine Dunham started long ago still continues today. Her lasting impact is her namesake, known as the Dunham Technique. The technique is a mix of African and Caribbean movements. Dunham used ballet and modern to mix in as well. Many describe her technique as polyrhythmic. Now that's quite good. Now if you turn to the side, you can have this fall to the side and roll through and come up. Yes, I've got to see this start, though, Rochelle, as though you were breaking. So you take a string and just let it drop like that, you see? And that's, that's much better. Yes. And again. Uh, now, stay back there and sink. Straighten your body line out and sink to your knees. Sink to your knees. That's it. And come up. All right. <laughs> Dunham took a stand using dance, showed others her culture, and showed society that there is more than one type of dance in Chicago and across the globe. The Dunham technique is a recognized and practiced form of dance by hundreds of thousands of dancers and teachers of all ages, and this acceptance helped pave the way for other cultural dance forms as well.